Outside, should I run and hide? How do I take my company worldwide? Do you love the law? Did you watch Hee Haw? What's the weirdest thing that you ever saw? What's it like in court? Favorite sport? Can you help with my book report? Is my hair too long? Am I right or wrong? And do you mind if I sing along to anything? Ask Alan anything in the world. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this uh, episode of Ask Alan the Podcast. I'm Alan Crone, the CEO of the Crone Law Firm, and I've got a great uh, guest with us today. We're in the presence of greatness, Mr. Ryan Trim, the 2003 Restaurateur of the Year, awarded by the Memphis Restaurant Association. Congratulations, Ryan. Thank you for joining the show. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, it was quite a, quite an honor to be picked by my peers to win that award this year. That's always a more important award to me. Sure. Uh, what are the, what's the criteria for restaurant tour of the year? You know, uh, a lot of it has to do with what we've done in the business. Um, as far as, you know, building a, uh, a, uh, foundation here in Memphis and opening a lot of restaurants and it, it could be one, it could be many, but more than anything, I think the reason I, I really appreciate the award is the amount of shows we give back to the city. Uh, we work really hard to try to stay involved with our community, whether it be in Midtown when we were on Cooper and Young or downtown or even out east. Um, I think it's important to stay grounded and remember all the people that uh, kind of make us who we are. Sure, sure. Well, I'll, I'll tell my my view, my, the viewers who don't know, you uh, own or are involved in some of my most favorite places to go. Um, for, first, you got to start with Sunrise. Um, you've got the, the two locations of sunrise, uh, there's, there's nothing like good breakfast food. Um, 117 prime. If you, if you haven't eaten there, you really ought to go. It's a great steakhouse, kind of a contemporary vibe and feel and menu, uh, great place to go before a grizzly game or tiger game or the Orpheum and then bell tavern, which is right behind it, uh, both of those are uh, great venues. I can, if I crane my neck out my window, I can see both of them and uh, try to get in there as much as I can. Well, I'm sitting in Bell Tavern right now, actually. Very good. Uh, yeah. And and it's kind of a, it's kind of a cool, uh, I guess you, can you get to it through the, the restaurant or do you have to come in through the alley? No, you can get through both ways. Uh, Barbo Alley has the main entrance, but it also, if you go through the bar area of Prime and walk straight to the back, uh, you can get through that way too. You just got to go past the bathrooms. Well, the uh, uh, the cool way is through Barbaro Alley. I, I, you know, it has a certain clandestine feel to it that uh, that I really like. I agree with you. Uh, what other uh, restaurants have you been? I know you've been involved with. Um, uh, we had so I had Sweetgrass and Cooper Young for years. Um, I opened Sweetgrass in 2010, um, and then next door, which was the bar that shared a wall with it, uh, in 2011. And we kept those open until April of last year. We're coming up on a one-year anniversary of closing those places. Um, really, you know, I, I started out a partner, Glenn Hayes, uh, who owned Cafe 1912 and La Terrell here in Memphis. And we opened Sweetgrass and next door together. Uh, and then over a couple of years, I bought them out. And for a while there, I owned it on my own. And we had a great run, man. Uh, Sweetgrass was my first baby. Uh, before that, I was working for Jeff Dunham at the Grove Grill. And uh, before that, I was in Charleston. So um, Sweetgrass was my first kind of stab at it. And we, I had a blast doing it. I wouldn't change anything about it. Uh, the neighborhood was um, just more than welcoming to us. They uh, they greeted us with uh, open arms. And we had so much fun there. And then next door, just killed it. Uh, that first, you know, we opened right about the time the Grizzlies were really kind of hitting their first playoff um, grind with Tony Allen and Zebo and Marcus Gasol and um, uh, Mike Conley. And I remember we were playing the Spurs and we beat the Spurs and it, it just went nuts. It uh, The whole thing was crazy and it took off from there. So we had a lot of fun. And then uh, Craig Blondis, who uh, – he and Roger Sapp on Central Barbecue together. 
we went on a trip to um, Will, uh, Willamette Valley and we did a uh, pork roast out there, a pig roast. They did barbecue and we did a bunch of stuff. There were a bunch of chefs that went. But Craig had been coming to the bar next door for years because he lived in the area. And I met Roger on this trip out there. And Roger had bought this building over on Jefferson. This was in 2016. And he really started bugging me about opening a breakfast restaurant and trying to do something with that. And uh, I was like, man, I don't know. Uh, at the time, I was a little gun shy. I had opened another restaurant called Southward that was at the corner of Poplar and Ridgeway. And it, you know, for whatever purpose, it did, it did not make it. Um, no rhyme or reason to that. But uh, we kept talking. I kept trying to give him different chefs. I was like, hey, go talk to this guy. Go talk to that guy. And finally, he was like, no, no, I don't want to talk to those guys. I want to talk to you. So we sat down and, and planned out and the, decided to open Sunrise together. So uh, it was a lot of fun. Shortly after that, before we even got Sunrise open, he came to Craig and I and he was like, I got another building downtown. It's, you know, it housed Buckley Steakhouse. It housed a Mexican restaurant. Years ago, his first one, it was uh, Union Jack's. And uh, he was like, would love for something going there. Do you and Craig have an idea? And Craig and I were like, well, you know, there's Texas State Brazil down here and there's Mesquite Chop House, but there's really not a steakhouse downtown. So we decided to open 117 Prime down here. And when we did that, I was like, look, you know, I'm working nights at Sweetgrass, working days at Sunrise. Like, I don't know. I'm going to keep all this part. And they're like, how about, you know, I was, I was an owner in Sunrise and Prime, but they weren't owners in Sweetgrass at the time. And they're like, look, why don't we, come in with you we'll we'll kind of take care of the books and the things that you're doing over there and uh you'll be able to you know do what you do best and, and run the restaurants so so we did and we formed a partnership that uh quite frankly called across the board uh and i don't know what we would do without it like i, I need my partners uh for everything you know roger keeps close eye on the numbers and the books and he makes sure we stay successful craig is a great person to lean on for systems and and uh just kind of the overall operations of the restaurant. So it's nice to have teammates, which I had never really had, you know. Um, I had Glenn for the first couple of years, but then after that, it was me by myself. And I was keeping the books and doing everything. So, man, this works so much better. Uh, we put the right people in the right places to, to do the right things. I don't spend quite as much time in the kitchen as I used to, which that part I don't love. I, I like cooking still. So anytime I get the opportunity of someone going on vacation, I usually pick up the line spot for them and uh, get to work a little bit. It's an excuse to not be on a computer. And uh, it's been great. It really has. And the opening the second sunrise has been unbelievable. Uh, out East is really, really, uh, they've taken us in. They, they, I thought this was going to take a year to really get off the ground and get people coming in. And, and we were busy like day three. Uh, so I, I appreciate Memphis. They've, they've been very loving towards me and I, I owe them everything. Well, I'll tell you, uh, Sweetgrass being your first uh, solo venture, I mean, you hit a grand slam with that. Uh, I mean, from the very beginning, you had to have a reservation to drive past that place, much less get in. Uh, how, what do you what do you uh, attribute that success that success to? You know, a lot of things. Uh, you know, I got a lot of good training when I was in Charleston and uh, working for Frank Lee. He taught me a lot. Um, we use a lot of we worked with a lot of farmers and a lot of great purveyors that kept us with good product. And I think it always has to start with good product, but I'd say more important than anything. I had an unbelievable staff when we opened that door, they were, their heart and soul was in it as much as mine. And that's always hard to do, but we really had a good team. Uh, I look back on it now and I still think that's one of the best restaurant teams I've ever had. Uh, I, I miss the hell out of all of them. Uh, it was it was a lot of fun. Those first two years were we were up late and we were there early. But, uh, man, we had a lot of fun doing it. I had a lot of young people working for me that didn't have, you know, kids and families for the most part. So they were able to they were able to kind of put in the hours that we needed to put in. But um, we were lucky. We, we had a lot of fun. So how does uh, a guy like you become a chef? Uh, were you always uh, interested in cooking? Or uh, how did that come up? Every I always say every superhero has an origin story. What's what's your what's your origin story? You know, it's funny you say that. Um, you know, I, I think my dad was a lawyer, and still is. 
I always thought that was just what I was going to do. I don't know if there was any rhyme or reason to why. Uh, I went to Ole Miss. I, I graduated from Christian Brothers High School in 98, went on to Ole Miss, and I was an English major with a business minor. And I just was like, yeah, I'm just going to go right into law school and just this is going to be what it is. Never put any thought into it. Never thought, what do I like to do? Well, you know, what makes me want to get up in the morning and work? And while I was there, I started working in restaurants. Uh, and specifically, the one where I really fell in love with it was uh, 208 South Lamar. It's owned by Russell French. Uh, I worked for John Myrick and Christian Gaines in the kitchen. And it was my senior year of college that I started there. They had just opened. And I fell in love with it. I was like, oh, my God, I love this. This is awesome. I was always cooking for my friends at, you know, at the house or I had grandmothers that were unbelievable cooks. My father was a very good cook. My mother was a great cook. Um, and I had one grandmother from Italy and one grandmother from England. And they both taught me different things. I mean, the cuisines in these two places are very different. <laughs> and, right. and so I learned a lot. And I started using those things to make my own dishes when I was in the kitchen at 208. Not necessarily put on the menu, but make family meal and things like that. Really fell in love with it. And Christian came to me and he was like, man, why, what, what do you, why are you going to law school? I don't understand. And I was like, oh, you know, it's just kind of what you do. And he was like, no, no, no. He's like, you should, you should think about this. So I looked into culinary school. And when I graduated from Ole Miss, they had this program at Johnson & Wales in Charleston. It was a, I think they called it garnish your degree. It was an associate's <laughs> degree. I have to take all the undergrads. Yeah. Because. I had, you know, I just had to take like the basic cooking classes and uh, nutrition and uh, food safety. And so I went there and I did a one year program. Uh, Andy and Mike, Andy Tice from Michael Hudman went there at the same time I was. And, uh, you know, I, I finished that and I loved it. I worked in a restaurant there called Slightly North Abroad or Snob. Uh, they said <laughs> anyone that lived north abroad, you know, the south abroad was where all the money was. So anybody that lived north abroad was considered kind of the poor or the working class. So their restaurant was slightly north of Broad. <laughs> um, and it was a great time. Uh, my chef there, Frank Lee, just really kind of found something in me that found a love for food and the product that we're using uh, and paying respect to that as we cook. And I've always cooked that way. I've always tried to teach that way. And I mean, that's that's kind of the history of it. That's it, That was all she wrote. There was no turning back at that point. Uh, I was I was hooked. It was like heroin for me. Well, I'm glad you came back to Memphis. <laughs> you know, I wasn't planning on coming back here. That was, uh, everybody can thank my wife for that one. Um, I had every intention of, you know, I married my high school sweetheart. We were together through college and even while I was in Charleston. And I really wanted to move to either Chicago or San Francisco or possibly Washington, D.C. Uh, I had jobs lined up in all three places. My career would be very different than it is now if I would have done these things, uh, not for better or worse, just different. Different, yeah. And, but she was like, you're at work all of the time. She's like, you work like 70, 80 hours a week. And she was like, if that's how it's going to be, then I would prefer we move back to Memphis where I could be close to my family. And so I did. And when I got back here, uh, first day back, uh, I took might have taken a couple of weeks off to hang out, but um I went straight to the Grove Grill. Uh, I lived on Perkins at Crossover. And so I was like, oh, that place is right up the street. Maybe I can go get a job there. And I went in and uh, I worked a stage for Jeff Dunham. And uh, he hired me pretty quickly. And I stayed there for five years before the opportunity came to open Sweetgrass. Well, very good. Uh, we're, we're, we're glad you came back. Uh, and uh, we all may be a little heavier because you came back. Uh, but we're, we're a lot happier. Uh, <laughs> tell me about what your perspective on the Memphis restaurant scene man it's so cool here you know when I was in Charleston everything was a competition everybody was fighting against each other it was almost like gangs I used to make fun of it I was like it's like <laughs> West Side Story out here people are writing in bathroom stalls like collard greens and other ones like your collard greens need muscat and it was ridiculous it was it was different restaurant people you know fighting there was something cool about it but it's the same like, you know, why are we all enemies? Uh, getting back here, I don't know how it was before I got here, but I will tell you there is a, it is a breath of fresh air to work with the people that are in my industry here. Um, they're friendships. Uh, we work together. We look out for one another. Uh, there's, there's so many great people here. I feel like, 
you know, Jose and Erling and Felicia and Ben Smith have paved a way. I have so much respect for these guys. They have paved a way for us, but now there's a newer generation that's coming through. And I guess we're already here uh, with Kelly and Andy and Mike and myself. Um, it, there's just, it's, it's awesome. Uh, it just keeps growing. And I mean, there's a lot of names I left out that are amazing. And it's not just the restaurants you hear about every day. Like we have great little restaurants. I don't know if anybody's been to Bala's, but like Bala's doing a great job. Uh, it, it, it's something I've never experienced. I've never eaten, but it was, it was wonderful. I love it. Um, I love to go to Fos Saigon and, and try the food over there. Like Pearl does a phenomenal job. Um, there's so many good restaurants here in Memphis and it, it, it's so easy to not eat at a chain. I, I just, I can't get over the friendships, the bonds and just the unique culture we have in here in Memphis. Um, I love it. I really, it's not like this anywhere else. I've worked in restaurants in Pittsburgh, worked in restaurants in Charleston, Oxford, uh, all over the place. And none of them are like this. Yeah. I think that, um, you know, just as an outsider to the to the industry looking in, you you can tell that uh, because uh, everybody that I've interviewed that that's in the restaurant industry in Memphis has said what you said, and you know you see Kelly English doing uh, all kinds of community outreach and including um, you know different restaurants and different uh, chefs in it, um, and I think COVID helped with that. That was one of the I think the silver linings of COVID was I think it brought it seems to have brought the uh, restaurant industry together. And I don't remember who said it. Um, it may have been Kelly uh, English who said it, you know, you can't eat at the same restaurant every night. So in, in a lot of ways, no. you're not really competing with those guys. Um, uh, you know, unless it's for tourist trade, but even then people stay more than one or two nights. Um, so, so anyway, I, it, it's great to see that, that vibe here in Memphis, and that's just kind of a Memphis thing, you know, to be that kind of neighborly and tight. That's exactly right. I'll tell you what, when I was in Cooper Young, and I miss him every day, but Ben Smith was the greatest neighbor on the face of the earth. Uh, I couldn't have asked for anything better. Uh, I still miss them all the time. They were such good neighbors. Uh, I would, that's the only thing that – that's not the only thing, but that's one of the biggest things to close the sweetgrass. So I, I miss having Ben as a neighbor. Yeah, yeah. Well, what do, what do you think's in the future for uh, uh, for you? You got enough restaurants? Are you looking at 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 other things? What what are you going to do? You know, uh, people ask me all the time when Sweetgrass going to reopen. You know, if we find something, we're going to open it. I haven't been looking as hard. I won't lie. Uh, properties just it's it's not cheap, and I'm looking. I'm very specific about what I'm looking for for that. Um, so it's it's hard to pinpoint that. Uh, but sunrise, I think, I think you're going to see some more sunrise, um, where that is. I don't know. Uh, we're still, we're still working that out. Uh, I have some great people that kind of help me determine where the next one's going to be, but, uh, we're looking hard again. It's gotta be the right fit. You know, we're not looking to be in every, uh, suburban shopping mall. Uh, we, we kind of like having a standalone building. We kind of like being unique. Uh, so we're, we're looking though. I think sunrise is an answer. Uh, Marissa Griffith, my sous chef and, uh, right arm really she's really taken our catering program to another level so i think you're going to see us invest more in that and invest more in sunrise and and see where we can go with those two things for now I'm not saying that's all that's all i can see on the horizon at the moment I, I i'm hip i understand well very good uh well ryan i appreciate your time uh it's been fascinating uh i'll uh when i when i go into uh one of your places i'll look for you wave at you um, and just don't get between me and, and, uh, and the food. That's, that's all I ask is I get, you know, a little, a little cranky if my blood sugar's down, but, uh, uh totally understand. say hi when you come in for sure. I will. Uh, thank you so much for doing this. I, and I want to thank everybody for watching. If you've enjoyed this and why wouldn't you have enjoyed it? Uh, please share it on social media or email it, the link to a friend, comment on it, Give us a five-star review. Make Ryan look good uh, with a bunch of five-star reviews on the, the podcast. Um, I look forward to seeing y'all the next time. Ryan is going to go ser serve some of the best food in Memphis, and I'm going to go get some justice. Thank you very much. <laughs>